welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. In this video, I will show you how to make this super cute daffodil cotton scrubby. This cotton scrubby uses a brand new yarn by Red Heart called Scrubby Cotton. That's right, it's all of the aspects you love about scrubby, only now it comes in 100% cotton. If you take a look down here, let me show you what you need for this project. First, download the pattern, which is available for free over on redheart.com. Along with the pattern, you will need one skein of four different colors of scrubby cotton. For this project, we use coral, lemony, jade, and cotton. Along with the scrubby yarn, you will need a size I or a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. You will also need a bent tip tapestry needle. And then here in the video, I'm going to use removable stitch markers to help you distinguish where the corners are on the beautiful daffodil cotton scrubby. All of the information regarding the materials and the free pattern can be found in the link right down there in the video description box below. While you're down there, go ahead and smash that like button, as my kids say, to let me know that you really enjoyed this video. Now, once you have your materials, let's go ahead and jump in and learn how to make this really great cotton scrubby. As I mentioned, Scrubby Cotton is a brand new yarn by Red Heart, and it has all the things you love about the Scrubby yarn, except now it comes in 100% cotton, which means it is much more like the typical cotton yarn you are used to using for dishcloths. So it will not dry as quickly as the regular Scrubby Cotton yarn, because that's made of polyester, but this one will give you the really nice softness and um, cushiness that you love of cotton yarn. This particular daffodil cotton scrubby, just as the name suggests, is made using the scrubby cotton um, yarn. And so it is just really simple to work with. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how you would work with scrubby cotton, but then I'm actually going to bring in some Baby Hugs Red Heart Light to make the sample piece out of because I think it'll be easier for you to see on film. But because I know you will be using the scrubby cotton for your actual actual dishcloth, let me show you a couple of tips regarding it. When you're using scrubby yarn, it can become a little bit difficult to see where you're supposed to place your hook. So my biggest piece of advice is really use your fingertips to find where the holes or the post of the stitches are. Once you locate those, you'll know exactly where to place your hook. Regarding doing a slip knot and your chain stitches, you do it just like you would do any other yarn. You place your slip knot directly onto your hook and you would continue on doing your chain stitches, however many the pattern indicates you should do. Once you've created your chain stitches, I think this is the hardest part of anything when you work with scrubby yarn, is once you've done your chain stitches, when you go back to work into those chains, it can be a little difficult to see the chains. The best thing to do is really kind of let your eyes not focus in on the individual strands or the nubbies that come off of the scrubby cotton, but really look for the shape of the chain stitch as it's made. You know it sort of looks like a V or a chain or a, um, a teardrop. Once you find that chain stitch, I can see it right there, just put your hook in it. It doesn't really matter if you grab just the back loop or two loops or the bottom loop, as long as you get in there and you are through a stitch where you at least have it through a section of the chain, you can carry on and complete whatever stitch it is you're working with. Once you've got the first chain, it then becomes easier to quickly locate the second chain because you begin to, once again, not focus on the nubbies that are hanging off the scrubby cotton, but you start to look for the shape of the chain. You can see here, I'm kind of squishing my chain a little bit to see how it forms or um, kind of comes apart, and I can see that right there, there is a chain. See, there's the top loop, there's the back, here's the bottom, and I can stick my hook right into there and work directly into the chain. Now, of course, I'm not following any pattern right yet. I'm just showing you some quick tips to working with the scrubby yarn. And for this, I would just continue on doing whatever number of stitches I needed to do to the end of my row. 
Once I complete my first row, getting into those foundation chains, I am all set. It begins to come um, really easily as you work with the subsequent rows. Just give yourself a little bit of time. When I do my next row, as I turn my work, I can already begin to start to see where the tops of my stitches are. I can kind of see through the nubbies and notice the holes. Can you see them right there? Hopefully, I'm going to hold it real still. You can see the white coming through those holes. That's where I will just use my hand and I can actually feel the hole. I can feel it right there. And when I tilt it top, I can see my V stitch, the top of my stitch right there. And so I know that that is where I'm going to place my hook and create my stitch. The good news is if I happen to go in the wrong place, it really doesn't matter because just as those nubbies are making it hard for you to see where the stitch is for the scrubby yarn, it'll make it hard to see if you make any mistakes. As you go along, you will simply find each stitch along the way, use your fingers, really kind of feel your way along, and go ahead and make your stitches. If you find you're having a difficult time knowing where the end of your row is, don't be shy to use a removable stitch marker and place the stitch marker at the end of your row so that way you know where the last stitch is. If you want more instructions on how to use stitch markers when you're working with different stitches, I'm going to put a link here to my beginner crochet videos because I really use stitch markers a lot. I find them really helpful, especially for beginner crocheters, to know where the beginning and the end of their row is. Those of you who are experienced crocheters who are working with the scrubby yarn for the first time, you also might find it really helpful to use the removable stitch markers at the beginning and the end of your row just so you know where those stitches are. As you get going along with your scrubby yarn, you will find it a lot easier and a lot more rhythmic to find where those holes are. You can see here, I can, I just, it's just, you find a rhythm. I don't know how else to say it. You just give yourself a little time and you'll find it. Now that you know how to work with the scrubbing yarn a little bit, let's go ahead and jump in with the daffodil pattern. And once again, I am going to use the Red Heart Baby Hugs Light Yarn. Um, I just chose the light yarn because I had to, I had all the colors actually in this yarn, so I'm using this. Um, it's a fun yarn to work with, and again, I'm just doing it for an example. Um, I would not actually make a dishcloth out of this yarn. I'm purely doing it to show you how to do it. But you could, if you wanted to, like, so this is is the sample this is the finished sample of the baby hugs it's just in two pieces you could make actual squares and make a blanket out of this if you chose to just throwing that out there all right so let's start off with our color a which is the coral color so with your scrubby cotton if you want to follow along with the scrubby cotton you will go ahead and you will begin by placing a slip knot directly onto your hook now, because this is an intermediate pattern, I am going to move along rather quickly through the stitches. If you want a more slowed down version of how to do a particular stitch, please go ahead and visit that beginner crochet playlist and you'll find all of the stitches you need really slowed down and walked through step by step. Once you place the slip knot on your hook, you will go ahead and you will chain two stitches. Once we've chained those two stitches, we will go back to the first one and we will place six single crochet all into that first stitch. So there's one, two, three. Now I'm going to suggest something here. I like to sort of rotate my work around a little bit here. So it's almost like I'm going to the underneath side of my stitch when I'm doing stitches like this, knowing I'm going to join them in the round. So that way I'm kind of forcing them to be in the round. There are my six single crochet. Now I join with the slip stitch to the very first single crochet. So I go into the single crochet, I would yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull through. Now at this point, the pattern wants you to go ahead. Now at this point, the pattern wants you to go ahead and cut your coral yarn and move on to the lemony color, which is the yellow color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to follow along just like that. But for those of you who are experienced crocheters, if you want to switch colors at this point where you switch it through the slip stitch, 
I would go ahead and do that, all right? I'm not gonna show you how, but if that's something you wanna try and do and you're wondering why I didn't do it, the only reason I'm not doing it is because it's not written in the pattern and I wanna make sure I'm following the pattern as good as possible. So I've gone ahead and I've cut my first color, which was my coral, and it says to go ahead and switch to color B. It doesn't give me any other instructions than that. So I am switching to my color B. I'm just simply going to hold my new color right next to my old color, and I'll continue on with the instructions. That's the way it says. So I would go ahead and I would chain one with my new color, and then it says to do two single crochet in each single crochet all the way around. So I'm going from six single crochets to 12. So I will just simply go around and make sure I get all 12. So there's one, two, three, four. See, I'm putting two stitches into one, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now it says to go ahead and slip stitch into the first single crochet to join. So I like to take my hook, go underneath the V of that first single crochet, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through. So I've joined with a slip stitch and now I've created my 12 single crochets all the way around. You'll notice at this point I have not turned my work and so I'm gonna move on to the next round. And I'm gonna call it a round, even though in the pattern they call it a row, I still, I, you are working in rounds so I would totally call this a round. So I am going to chain two and this does not count as a double crochet. Now it says it, the pattern that I'm supposed to do a double crochet into each single crochet all the way around. So I am not increasing, I'm simply doing a double crochet into each stitch. So I yarn over my hook, go into the top of the single crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. I'll do that into each stitch all the way around. So let's go ahead and do that. So that was one, there's two, and 12. Once I finish this last double crochet here, I will go ahead and join with the slip stitch to the first double crochet, and I will move on to row four. Now, you'll notice here at the beginning, your work is starting to cup in on itself, and that's because we didn't do any increases there with that double crochet, okay? That's what's gonna give us that three-dimensional look of the daffodil. Now, because we want the top of our daffodil to have sort of a scallopy look, we are going to do what I like to call picos, and so that's what we're going to uh, do here. Even though they're not distinguished as picos, this is how you would do it. So the first thing you'll do is chain one stitch, and then you will do a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet into each double crochet. So all of those, all of those stitches, that single, two chains, and single, all went into one stitch. And you'll notice on the pattern too, all of that is within parentheses. So we will do that into the top of each double crochet all the way around. So we'll do a single, chain two, and a single. Move to the next one, single, chain two, and a single. Let me grab some more yarn here. And I simply am going to do this all the way around. And once I get to the end of this round, this will be the end of this portion of the, um, the daffodil cotton scrubby. This portion is made separately from the square portion because it is the three-dimensional bit. And once the square portion is finished, you actually sew this little bit onto the square portion. So I'm sure that those of you who are experienced crocheters out there can figure out a way that to make all of this into one 
um, solid piece so you didn't have to do any sewing, but that's not the way the designer Rebecca Venton uh, wrote this one. And it's totally fine the way it is written. I actually really like it. I like having the choice to either add the top of the daffodil or just keep the square with the really pretty petals as is. I actually like that too. I've got one more double crochet to do here. Or not double, single, chain two, and single. Then I will slip stitch to the first single crochet and then fasten off my work. So I will go ahead and cut my yarn and then pull my work. Now you'll notice that I left a nice long tail and I'm gonna suggest you do that too because you can use your tails to weave in or tie, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. You can use your tails to sew them to the square and it's always easier to weave in tails that are longer versus shorter. So here we are, this little bit here, this three-dimensional bit, that is the daffodil portion of the cotton scrubby. So let's bring in the actual cotton scrubby so you can see here. So this little bit here is what we just created. And you can see the scallops are really subtle. Let me see if I turn it on my side here. They're really subtle all the way around, but it's a nice little touch. It's a nice little touch. So this little piece is obviously completed. This one was completed and then I sewed it to the square portion. Okay, so you finished part one of this two-part series. Now it's time to watch video two so that way you can learn how to make the outside border of this really great daffodil cotton scrubby. Hopefully you've enjoyed it so far and you've learned a couple new things. Go ahead and watch the second video. I'll put a link to it right down there in the video description box below. There'll also be a link right up there. Let's see, it's over there. <laughs> the little I button, all right? Join me over there. I'll show you how to make the rest of this cotton scrubby.